Are you feeling merry today? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our Cup of Cheer quilt. So we did the tree bucket and the tree top. And you guys did so great on that. I'm loving seeing the pictures coming out. So then we also did the snuggle block and the adorable mittens block. So today we get to move on. These are all for section two, by the way. So we are going to work on the Mary blocks. So there are five blocks in all, but uh, one of it's kind of odd. One of them is not going to be part of section two So you can choose to do it now or do it later. It's the Y block that will be in section three But the E part is on a different page. So it's kind of odd I think because the M R R Y blocks are all very very basic Whereas the E block will have um, one of those little velcro pieces. I think that's the only difference, but Let's go ahead. I'm thinking we could just do all of them. We could probably do them in two hoopings. I don't think we could get them all in one. I'm not sure, but you know me. I'm going to try and <laughs> see how many I can combine. So anyway, let's go over what we'll need. These are super simple. And like I mentioned, the MRRY blocks are on page 19. And each of them are going to have a piece of fabric. It's just one fabric, so simple, very, very simple um, pieces with just embroidery on them. So page 19, and each of our blocks are six and a half by six and a half. And let's just go over real quick what they are. So the first one is this green with Christmas swirls on it. And like I said, six and a half by six and a half. And you do want to back it with feasible stabilizer. We're going to just do embroidery on this. So six and a half by six and a half. And it is the green Christmas doodle type fabric. And that's for that one will have the M on it. And then for the two R's, one of them is this um, teal, minty teal with snowflakes all over it. And again, six and a half by six and a half, backed with feasible stabilizer. And this one will have the first R on it. And then the second R is this navy blue, and it's got the Christmas doodles on it. And again, six and a half by six and a half, backed with fusible stabilizer, and it is the navy blue. And this is for the other R. And then for the Y, it is going to be, let me make sure, yep, the gray with white dots on it, gray with white dots, and cut to six and a half by six and a half, backed with feasible stabilizer, the gray with white dots. This is for the Y block. And again, this one is actually going to be for section three, so you can save it for later if you choose, but I think we could get all of these together, so I'm going to do them together. And then um, since we're going to quilt these, we're going to use batting. And so our final cut size, I'm sure, is four and a half. Let's just confirm that. Um, four and a half by four and a half. And so that means that we want a piece of batting that is five by five. So we'll need four of them for the MRRY blocks. Four pieces at uh, five by five for your batting. All right. And then for the quilting on these, they're different. So um, it is going to be for the first one for that M block, we're going to use the cup one design in four by four. And then for the first R block, we will use the four by four vertical of lines six. That will be cute. And that's the one that's got all the snowflakes on it. And then for the plant three for the dark the navy blue one for the second R, we're going to use that navy blue. And that one is going to be plant three, also in four by four. And the last one, the Y, that's the y, the gray with white dots on it. That one is for the Y block. And that one we are going to use Christmas eight. Oh, that's the snow, the stockings one. I didn't get to use that. There was uh, one of the presents was supposed to have a stocking one on it, and I decided not to do that. So that will be really cute, the stockings on it. So it is Christmas 8 in 4x4, four four, and make sure and use the horizontal for that one. So that's all for those four, the MRRY blocks. 
And then if you choose to do the E, actually you kind of need to because it's this one is for section two and it's separated. And like I said, the reason I think it's separated is because this one will have one of those Velcro dots. So that's the only difference. The other ones are just simple um, embroidery, nothing changed. And this one does have an embellishment on it. And it is that Velcro dot. I almost threw it. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the three three quarter inch and it is just the soft side just the soft side of the um, velcro dot in three quarter inch and this is for the e-block so let's talk about that e-block real quick like I mentioned this one is on a different page this one is on page 20 and it is the gray stripes our main fabric is going to be this gray stripes and back it with fusible stabilizer start with it at six and a half by six and a half and choose how you want the your stripes to go so in the book if you're following the book the stripes are going this way so in a vertical fashion all right you can see the stripes that way um so you know, it's a six and a half by six and a half block, or at least the fabric, the main fabric. So either way, you could do it however you want to do it. I'm going to follow the book and do it in this vertical. So then again, the batting is going to be five by five because our final cut size is four and a half by four and a half. So the batting, and then um, we are going to have that Velcro dot. So don't forget your Velcro dot. It's the three quarter inch and it's just the soft side that we're going to use for this. And we will embroider that on and we'll go over that. It's very simple. We did it, what did we do it on? We did it on one of our blocks, um, the Velcro dot. Oh, the, for the marshmallows on the mug. So it was easy, no problem. Um, I did slow down my machine on that mug to get the dots on for that. So I'll probably do that again. Hopefully I'll remember. Um, but anyway, so on this one, we are going to quilt it. And we are going to quilt it with Winter 2. That's that snowman one. Super cute. Um, in 4x4. Four four. So Winter 2. And Winter 2 is part of the bundle of the Cup of Cheer quilting. I saw that some people were using the Winter design that is from the CBTs when we did the Clear Blue Tiles Table Runner. You can absolutely use those. That is fine. But just know that it is also available in the Cup of Cheer quilting bundle. So either way will work great and we are going to um, go to the computer and see how many that we can mash together in one hooping or in a couple of hoopings, depending on the size of your hoops. So that will be fun to um, see what we can fit in. Hey everyone, so I wanted to give you a quick visual. Sorry, bringing my microphone over here in case you couldn't hear me. Um, so a quick visual, uh, we are going to combine our Mary blocks. So to do that, I'm going to use Embrilliance Essentials. If you have not purchased embroidery software yet, we're, uh, the group is learning Embrilliance together. We've been doing great with it and really enjoying it. So to do that, I have links underneath all my videos and embedded within the, the videos, or you can go to Embrilliance dot com slash jam affiliates slash Kristen creates and um, that will give a little kickback to me as teaching you this software and you would just go to the first item here see where it says essentials or you can go up here to the store either way it's not going to matter it's the same thing and it's on sale right now until the 15th for 139 dollars you would add it to your cart so very simple it's a great software all right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Embrilliance now, and it will open to the last hoop you used. This will show you down here at the bottom here that I'm at my 10 by 16 hoop, which is what I want to try out. Um, if you're not already at your 10 by 16 hoop or your largest hoop, whatever that will be, um, you can click on this folder here, and it's your preferences folder, and you can choose whatever hoop you want and say OK. So I am on this, and then I always go here. I've already done it, but on here I click on this H button, which just shows me my whole hoop. All right, because if you were to zoom in or whatever, anything like that, you can just click on this H, and it'll bring you right back to your hoop. All right, so very quickly, we're just going to bring in all of the quilting designs that are shown on page 19. So one at a time. I'm going to bring in the quilting design and then I'm going to bring in the letter also and then we're going to move the letters and I'll show you why. So if we go here to this merge stitch file button 
and we look for our first quilting design. So I'm going to close this that I was using earlier and go to the Cup of Cheer quilting bundle. And the first one that we're looking for is cup one. So that is right here, cup one, open up this little plus sign, embroidery files, and then block by block is the technique we are using. And I use PEZ for my machine. And then we're looking for the four by four and they are in numerical order. So there it is right there. Double click on that and it goes to the center. Now, before we move it, the easiest way to get the letter in is to bring the letter in now before we move it. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you that. So if I go to merge stitch file and then instead of the quilting designs, I'm going to go up here to the quilt itself. Cup of chair quilt. I have it on my desktop and then go to embroidery files. Pez is what I use for my machine. Cup of chair quilt and this is a stitch block. So in the second folder stitch block and we're looking for the M which is the first item. So double click on that and see, this is why I, I mentioned that we're going to do it before we move it, because then it goes right to the center. You can click on that and you can see from the black squares that it is right in the center of this block. If you were to move the block first and then bring in the M, you're gonna have to visually center it, which isn't as easy. It's definitely doable, but it's not easy. It's not as easy. So then once you do that, so notice I have everything clicked. You have to make sure to have everything. If you were to just click on the letter um, and move it, then you've just lost that placement. You want to have all of it selected and you can do that by clicking outside and dragging all of it or you can do it by going this way and clicking everything. Either way you want to make sure that everything is is clicked and then you want to hold and drag it to where you want it. So I'm going to drag it over here. All right, so that's the first one. And like I said, we're gonna to wanna to move the letters. I'm almost certain it will not um, group them with the letters in between, but we'll check it, can't hurt to try. All right, so merge stitch file, and we're gonna look for the R next. We're gonna go for the R. So we're gonna go back to, I'm sorry, before we bring in the R, we're gonna bring in that quilting for the R. So we're gonna to go to the cup of cheer quilting bundle and the second one for the first R is line six. So we're looking for line six right there. Click on that embroidery files. I use Pez for my machine and we're looking for the four by four vertical. This one comes in horizontal or vertical. So you want to make sure to click the right one. Here's the horizontal and here's the vertical. So I'm just going to double click on that. It goes to the center and before we move it, we're going to bring in that first R. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm going to go up to where I have my cup of cheer quilt embroidery files, Pez, cup of cheer quilt, and then it is in that stitched blocks and we're looking for the R. There's probably only one R. Yep. One R. So double click on that and it goes right to the center. And again, make sure to have all of the items selected and you can tell right here that we have the R and the quilting selected and then just move it all the way up and all the way to the side. Now be really careful. You don't want it so far to the side that it's hitting the hoop or over the hoop. All right. I've had people say that they did all of this and then they bring it to their hoop and it, or to their machine and it says that um, you have to change to a different hoop. It doesn't fit. That means that you've brought it too far over and it should show you here. It should show if you've got anything too far over or made it too large for the hoop that it should turn red here and say, nope, I can't do it. But if you don't notice that and you bring it over to your machine and it's not working, that would be why is you've got it too far over. All right, so that's the M and the R. We need another R. So we're going to go to this merge stitch file. And for the second R, we're going to do plant three. So back to the quilting bundle and plant three. Embroidery files, block by block is the technique we are using, and Pez. And we're looking for plant three and four by four. Right there. Double click and it goes to the center. Before we move it, we're going to bring that R in again. And I'm just going to go to merge stitch file. You could copy that the other R we used, but this is simple too. All right, so cup of chair quilt, embroidery files, as 
cup of chair quilt, and then the two stitch block. And there is the R right there. Double click on that and it goes to the center. Now remember, click and drag so that you get all of it. Make sure over here that you have all of it. If you were to just click on this, just the R, then you're going to move it out of place. You want it, and you can see right here, I only have the R selected. So you just want to make sure to click and drag and hold all of it. Or again, you can do it this way, either way. All right, so bring this down. I'm going to bring it about right here just to give myself a little bit of room between because I'm going to try and get all five in one hooping. We'll see if it will work. All right, um, so that is the third one. The next one, we are going to go back to the merge stitch file and I'm going to look for my quilting bundle. And this one for the, we did both ours, we're on the Y, we're on Christmas eight now, right there. Christmas eight and embroidery files, Pez. Now notice this one doesn't have um, block by block in CBT, it's just got the one, which means that it's the block by block. It doesn't come in a CBT version. You can see that it goes over the edge here and that's how you know it's a block by block version. All right, so um, we're looking for four by four and there's horizontal or vertical. We want the four by four horizontal. See, here's the vertical and here's the four by four horizontal. All right, so before we move it, I know it looks a little convoluted here, but before we move it, we need to bring in that Y. So I'm going to go here to merge stitch file, and then I'm going to scroll up to where I have my cup of cheer quilt right there, embroidery files, Pez for my machine, cup of cheer quilt, and then it's a stitched block, and we're looking for the Y, which is right there, All right? Bring that in. Okay, now let's see if I were to do this. Nope, see it only clicked on the Y. So be very careful and make sure that you're getting everything. We want this quilting design and the Y. So let's try it from over here. There, now we have everything and you can see I've got the quilting design and the Y. So I'm gonna click and just drag it over here and move it. Doesn't have to be exact. That looks good. You're just trying to give yourself a little bit of room between the letters so that nothing will overlap too much. All right, so we have M, R, R, Y. We need the E, so we're going to start by the quilting design. Now we're moving to page 20 for that E, and we're going to look for the quilting design. There's the quilting bundle. And this one is winter 2 right there. Embroidery files block by block as for my machine and we're looking for the four by four right there all right and again before we move it we're going to add in that e this is the e and i'll show you why we're keeping this the e is out of order it seems like but it's really not because this one has that extra step and if we were to put it in the correct spelling order then it will not join because of that little velcro step so I believe it wouldn't. I'm not absolutely certain of that, but all right. So we've already done the quilting. I'm going to go ahead and close the quilting and we are looking for the quilt, cup of chair quilt right there and embroidery files, Pez for my machine and then the cup of chair quilt. And this one, I don't think it'll say stitched block. I'm not sure about that. It is a stitch block. It might be a dimensional. No, I think it's probably going to be under stitch. So let's look for it here. We are looking for the E. Hmm. Oh, there it is right there. All right, so double click on the E. It goes to the center. And then again, we want to make sure to grab all of this. So I'm going to do it from the bottom and drag up so that I have the E and the quilting and then click on the stitching and bring it down to the bottom, keeping it in the center. It's not super important, but why not? Right. All right. So then we have M, R, R, Y and E and we're going to go ahead. Hi, we're going to go ahead and um, join these. So let's go ahead and try it like this. Um, as it is and just see what happens so if I go to well wait if we have we have the blue and the orange so you don't want to do it just yet sorry about that 
Um, if we do it now, all these blues and oranges from the placement for the batting and the placement for the main fabric will join together. So we definitely don't want to do that yet. We need to change some colors. So we could keep the blue, the original, the first two blue and orange and change the second two. So that's what I'm going to do just to save on time. So if we click on this first blue, it's actually the second, but of the first block. So you can see it's the uh, placement stitch for the main fabric on this first block. And I'm going to go ahead and just change it to dark aqua. We want to make sure that they're all the same on each of the blocks. So that's that first one. On the second one, this is the tack down of the main fabric. Since right now it's the same color as the tack down of the batting, it would join those. And we definitely don't want those joined. So I'm just going to click on the orange, click on the color here, and change it to the first one that I see, which is blaze. Doesn't matter what color you change it to as long as they're all the same within each block. All right. Um, so one other thing is on this turquoise, if you were to do, if you were to keep the turquoise on all five of the blocks, you would not get a chance to change the colors. And it looks like most of them have a different color. The M and the, R, the first R are the same pink, but so you could keep the first two. The M and the R we'll use as pink. That will work fine. All right, so we want to move to the next block. So we finished that first block. The second one, same thing. We've got the blue and the orange. So we want to click on this third one of this block. If we click on it, you can see it's this R block. And we're going to just change it to the same colors we used before on the first, on the M block, so that those will join. And we use dark aqua, so I'm going to go ahead and click on dark aqua and say OK. And then same thing with this orange, click on the color, and that color we used before was blaze. So I'm going to say OK. Now this one is, oh, let's see, the colors. Um... I didn't think about that. Let me see. The, on the E, we're going to use white. On all the others, we're going to use different colors. So we want to change the color on each of the stitching, on each of the quilting, because otherwise we won't have a chance to change the color. So I'm going to go ahead and change each of these just to make sure that they don't join so that we have time to be able to change the thread color when we're stitching it out. So I'm going to go ahead and the first one is sprout. I'm just the first one I see is sprout, so I'm going to go ahead and do that just so it won't join. And then on this second one, again, I don't want it to join, so I'm going to click on this default turquoise. And we already used sprout, so I'm going to use sea green. All right. And then this third one, we have the yep the um, tack down placement and tack down change. So we want to go ahead and change. Um, the second part of this one. So the placement and tack down of the main fabric on this, um, this R block, the second R block. So if I click on this and click on the color um, and change it to dark aqua, that's what we used on the others. And we do want those to join together. So we want to make sure to use the same color. You can, I'm doing it just by the first color we saw. The other thing that you could do is click on this palettes and it shows you if you've forgotten or whatever. I mean, you could certainly see it right here but palettes shows you the colors that are within your design. So either way works. I'm just going to click on dark aqua here. And then same thing for this orange. I'm going to click on that. And the first one that I used is blaze. So I'm going to stay with blaze. All right. And then again, this default 17 turquoise, I want to change it so that I get a chance to change my thread color. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Keep in mind, we're going to move all of these letters, and I'll show you that. But um, for now, I want to definitely change the color. So we used Sprout, and we used Sea Green. So I'm going to go ahead and ch change it to Mint for this one. All right, and then we are, let's see. We've got to click this open. So this little um, plus sign here will show us what's involved in here, because it's closed. And we want to be able to change these colors here. So you would just click that plus sign to show, to open up what is in that quilting. So again, we have the default one, blue and orange. The This third one in the block right there, we want to change to that <clears throat> dark aqua, I believe it was. Yep, dark aqua. All right. And then on the orange, we're going to change it to blaze, just like we did on the others. And then on this tur default turquoise, I'm going to change. We know that we did, our last one was mint. 
So I'm going to go to Magic Mint here and say OK. All right, we have one more, and then we need to move our letters too. All right, so that's already closed. This one we want to open up, <coughs> excuse me, so that we can change the um, colors of the um, placement and tack down of the batting, not the batting, the main fabric, because the first two are the batting, and we're going to just keep those so that they join with the others. So this one here, it's always the third step of the quilting design. We're going to change that again to dark aqua, same as the other, so that they will join together. And then this orange, change to blaze and say OK. All right, and then that turquoise, same thing. I want time to be able to change my thread color, so I'm going to change. We used magic mint on the last one, so the next color after that is cloud. So that, And again, it doesn't matter what color you choose I'm just sharing which ones I've chosen all right so those will all join but we want to make sure to move our letters I don't think it will join all of these with the letters in between um, but we could check it let's see here so let's make sure on the colors we have default pink grapefruit for the first one and then we could change this R what color is that? If we open this, it's on mint julep, which I think both of the R's are going to be mint julep, but we don't want, um, the first R is the same color as this pink grapefruit. So I'm going to go ahead and join that. I'm going to make it so that it will join. So to do that, I'm going to click on the color on that first R, and I'm going to go click on the color and then I'm going to go to the palettes because we know that we have a pink grapefruit in here. It'll be easy to find if I go through here and find my pink grapefruit palettes, pink grapefruit right there. All right, so I'm going to say OK. So that just because the M and the, the first R are the same color that we're going to stitch those. And then after that, let's see what this one is. This one is mint julep and we want that separated, and the Y is Tidewater. So that's perfect. Those won't join together. And then for the E, it should be red. Let's make sure it's a different color. Wildflower, that's perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, and we have the number on here that we're gonna do. So here's that default one, blue and orange again. And actually, I'm gonna change these just to make sure that it doesn't join with our default blue and orange with the um, the quilting design. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this just to make sure that that does not join. So we know we already used, I'm, we're on palettes right now, I want to go to threads so that we're using different colors. And we've already used a lot of these so we have to make sure not to use the same color, use a color that we've already chosen before. So I'm going to choose this light turquoise Again, it doesn't matter what color, but you want something different so that it doesn't join. And then I'm doing that with this orange as well. So click on the orange. We already used bronze, so we don't, or we used blaze actually. So I'm going to go ahead and click on bronze. That's fine. Okay. And then the black we haven't used, that's fine. Um, light turquoise we did not use. All right. Let's just make sure. What was that for sprout? We used sprout. Okay, so we should be all good. Now, I think that we'll have to move the letters to get the um, all of the quilting to join, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So let's go ahead and just test it. It can't hurt to try. So I'm going to go to utility color sort. Um, before we do that, you can see down here we have 34 thread color changes right now, and we want to make that a little bit less so that the placement of the uh, batting and the main fabric will join. All right, so utility color sort, see if it changes at all. It reduced it by 16 color changes. So let's see if that did it. That would be kind of amazing. So make sure here to click new view. When you click on new view, it opens another tab. This is the original one with all of those changes that we made. And this is a new view. This does not overtake that first one. So let's check it and see if we happen to get it right, that I'd be pretty amazed actually. So let's see. So look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I love and brilliance. So the first one is you can see all five of the placement stitch for the batting. 
and then the tack down for the batting is all five together. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. And then all five together for the placement of the main fabric and all five together for the placement of, or for the tack down of the main fabric or the basting stitch. Now this first one should be separate. It is, that's perfect. And since we're gonna change all of these colors, you don't have to do all of the quilting first as long as they're in the right order that they're underneath the letter. So let's just keep checking and see if we got it. So, and I don't think it, oh, it did. Oh, next, nice, nice, surprising. Okay, so there is our pink grapefruit. That could join with this one if we were to move it. I bet you it would. We'd have to make sure that this is above. So let's let's keep going and see how we're at. We've got the first M, we've got the quilting, and then the R, and that would work out fine. Or we could join. We could see if we could join one more if we wanted to try. All right, and then there is our quilting and our R. Since we have to change our thread colors anyway, this is exactly perfect. All right, and then the Y. And then here we have the quilting and the E, the 23, the little Velcro piece tacked down, and then some cutting guides on that. That's perfect. The only thing that we could do differently if we want to take it one step further is to move um, this R down so that we make sure so that the M and the R, or actually I think we'd move the M down, so that the M and the R can join. We could do that. Can't hurt to try it, right? Right now, this is perfect though. This is pretty amazing. You could do a save as on this and be done. Call it a day. I might even do that just in case the next version doesn't work out as right. I'm gonna go ahead. Let's do a file, save as, save stitch file as, and then I'm going to put it in my cup of cheer quilt stitched blocks and I'm going to name it Mary combined or whatever you want to name it. Um, I'm going to do that so that I know it's all five blocks. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and see what happens if I move this M. It's not, I have not found it to be super easy to move the designs. When I click on it, it likes to, ah, there we go, we got it. All right, I think it would be above this R. All right, so then we would have sprout for that one quilting, the next quilting, and then it would do both the M and the R. And let's see if it will join those. That would be pretty cool. All right, because we were already super close. We have 18 uh, right now instead of 34, and we might be able to get it down one more. Let's just see. So we would, you saw I, I just grabbed it and I moved it. I put it right above the R so that you want to make sure that both of these quiltings are first because you don't want the quilting over your embroidery. So make sure you've got both of your quilting, the first one and the second one, and then the M and the R. All right, and then it'll move to that third quilting. So that should be perfect. Let's just see. So utility color sort, and we might move from 18 to 17. Oh, it says did not reduce, but I think it does. Let's see. New view. And we've got the placement for the batting, tack down, main fabric placement, tack down, and the first quilting, the second quilting, and look at that, the M and the R are combined because those are gonna be the same color anyway. So that takes away one step. And then we have the quilting and the R, the quilting and the Y, and then we have all of the steps of the E. Perfect, 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 perfect. Super impressive. <laughs> that was really easy, very, very cool. So you can see down here, we now have 17 steps. That's perfect. So I'm going to go file, save, stitch file as, and I'm going to save it over my the other one that I just created. So I'm going to look for that right there, Mary combined. If I click on that and click save, it will save over that. It'll ask me, are you sure you want to save over it? And I'm going to say, yep, it's okay. You got it. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Done. And then you could send it to your machine and you're all ready for playtime. How cool was that? I'm pretty impressed. And brilliance is awesome.
my shirt today is a jean jacket, a light pink jean jacket. It says believe in the um, lapel and then on the back there are two more designs. I'll add information on those. I also have the same believe on the cuff of my jeans that I'm wearing right now. So that was fun. If you haven't ever done uh, the cuff of a jean, um, like cutoffs, what are they called? Uh, um, Capris, that's it, Capri jeans. If you haven't done that, it's pretty fun. And I do have a tutorial. You can look in the playlist. There is a tutorial specifically for embroidering on a jean jacket and then one for embroidering on the cuff of a jean. So anyway, it, they're, they're fun, pretty cute, right? <laughs> on a side note, all my grandkids are here. You should see them. They're running outside in my backyard right now. They're very loud, there's six of them in one family and one in another family. So I am very, very blessed with all these little grandkids and they surprised me. They arrived to surprise me and it was quite a surprise. I was very excited, very happy about it, very blessed.